from the campus of the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, you're watching Hawk's Eye View, a look into the campus community brought to you by Hawk Media. Now here's today's host, Eric Austin. How are you doing everybody? My name is Eric Austin and welcome to Hawk's Eye View. Today we're here talking to Tyler Holmes about his experience in a new course on campus called Afrofuturism. Would you like to tell me a little bit about that? Uh, sure. So, interestingly enough, just getting into the, like, the ground basis of the class, Afrofuturism uh, revolves around the cultural aspects of not just the sci-fi genre, but futuristic ideas in terms of, you know, being viewed through the black perspective and, you know, African Americans. So, what made you uh, want to consider taking that course? So I heard about it in one of my digital media courses last semester. It was a new course that's being offered this semester, and I can say there's nothing like it. I mean, first off, there's three teachers. You have Dr. Dana Little from the digital media department. You have Dr. H.G. Hayden Raider Gooding from the English department. And then you have Dr. Hernandez from the art department. So that kind of already... Uh, builds a structure on like the main parts of Afrofuturism. You have the language part, you have the media part, and you have the artistic part. Uh, and it's not like an interesting class to take, really. So what really sparked your interest into that course? I have to say that a lot of black-centered topics or black-centered classes have kind of left me out of the loop in quite a few cases. Like, well, even though I was raised you know, primarily around black people, like PG, home, school, uh, church. I've only been around black people for a majority of my life. Uh, it's still amazing to see what sort of things I can learn about my community uh, in terms of not just pop culture, but that is a big thing that's in this class that we're getting into. Uh, so I, it's kind of challenging a lot of my perceptions, kind of challenging a, like, a lot of notions, not just surrounding the community, but outside the community as well. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really just an interesting course. For sure, for sure. So, so uh, what are some things that y'all had learned there so far? Uh, so more recently, uh, well, the way the class operates was we had spent the first three weeks with all three teachers kind of like, you know, shifting around the same topic, mm -hmm. and then we'd uh, have three weeks with individual teachers, and this last three weeks we've been working with Dr. Hernandez. Uh, this is something, that, like his topic has been more like what I'm familiar with because we've been getting into like the origins of uh, black-centered characters in media, uh, like Milestone Comics. You got characters like Icon, you got Rocket, you got, of course, superheroes, static <laughs> shock. Like it's, it's crazy getting into the origins of these characters and you find out about characters that came before them. Like I never heard of Sun Man before this class and he I, was created to rival He-Man. I, I don't think I ever heard of Sun Man either. So what are some things you could tell me about Sun Man for some of those people that don't know who he is? Uh, so Sun Man, while I haven't, we haven't been given like a full in-depth uh, story of his origin as it pertains to the character, but as a concept, he was created by, I can't remember what her name was, but um, ah, I wish I did. Uh, but she had heard that her, like her, her son had told her that, you know, I enjoy seeing, I enjoy watching He-Man, I enjoy looking at superheroes, but I just don't feel like I can be one of them because, you know, so, I don't see it represented in media. So it was more so like a uh, in real life type of superhero. Mm -hmm. Kind of sort of like a uh, Blank Man. I don't know if you ever seen that movie. I can't say I have. Nah. But um, she had just taken her, her son to a toy store, and he was like, yeah, I like all these superheroes, but I can't see myself like really actively getting engaged in playing with them because they don't look like me. And so she took it upon herself to say, all right, if you don't see any heroes that represent you or your culture that well, I'll create a hero. And she did. She created Sun Man. Cre created like the universe around Sun Man, which mm. eventually got absorbed by Hasbro because it was made to rival He Man, and then He Man like eventually began to incorporate Sun Man and its characters, who were uh, African American, they had Asian American, they had Native American heroes, they had Hispanic, like they really wanted to incorporate the diversity of it in their own universe, and that soon became acceptable uh, by bigger companies, which kind of became the big, which kind of set you know, a lot of companies mm -hmm. forward. Uh, would you, what's the word I'm looking for? Would you recommend this course to anybody? Absolutely. Uh, especially if you're into things like digital media, writing, uh, all, and art. I, I think if you're really into those and you're also looking to get a uh, deeper perspective as it relates to the black culture and these topics, I think that Afrofuturism is a good course. How many credits is it? 
It's a three credit course. Well, thank you, Titusville, for being on the show. Mm -hmm. And we will hope to see you again.